Weekends, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, how yeah, are you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. How's my audio? Okay, it, good. It, it, good. Audible, yeah. Yes, this. I see you have your guest here. Yes, uh, Mr. Magogo, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Can I ask how you're uh, doing? I think he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's late, that's why. <laughs> it's late, that's why. He's sleeping, but he still want to be up for the conversation, right? Yes. <laughs> so how's everybody feeling tonight? Or this early Everyone morning? perfectly fine. We we just woke up now for, okay, for the that's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotta get a little rest, right? Yes, yes, yes. We did. Okay. Okay. So you you let me know um whenever you're ready to start. You can let me can you hear me? Or is it a delay in my chat? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I was saying that if you want to start now, we can start now. If you want to wait for some more people no. to come. No, it's fine. We can just uh, give it two minutes because I noticed there's a bit of a delay in, in the audio. So you want to give it two more minutes? Yes, yes. Um, I'm just trying to see if the audio can interact um, with immediate effect, but I'm seeing there's a bit of a delay there. Oh, okay. I don't know where that's coming from, because I can hear it. I can hear it clear without a delay. So it's probably just the connection. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it's the far but we may start. Um, but we yes, may start. Yes, if you want, now. you can. You know, um, tell us about yourself. Hmm? Yes. Okay, I can see uh, Mr. Magogo is here. He's he knows me. So for people who do not know who this is, this is um, the Oracle Prince. That is my author name. That's the name that I use on my books and my art. Mm -hmm. um, on my paintings, when I sign my paintings, that's the name that I write, the Oracle Prince. But my birth name is Mpo which is gift the one who's been gifted to this world by my mother and the ancestors to come and do the work that i'm doing now and uh, my slave name is prince that's the one that is in my identity <laughs> book and okay. my, surname, my surname is Koza, which is a Tsonga surname, which um, I will explain, go into details about my lineage and where I come from, how I became who I am now. Okay. Yes, that's me. I'm a father, a husband, a brother, a son, an uncle, 
um, all those things. So you want to talk about your family, your family the Sand Tribe, for those who are not familiar with that particular... Yes, um, I, I, I am some, somehow related to the, the, the Sand people through my mother, who was born in the 60s. And she, she, she was um, born right here in South Africa. Her father is um, what we call Khaled here in, in South Africa. They, they, they call them Khaled. But they are a mixture of the Khoisan people and the Dutch people who, who, who invaded South Africa. So that is how I am connected to the Sand Tribe through my mother's um, father, who is supposed to be my grandfather. And uh, on my father's side, it's 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 the Tsonga people, who are from Mozambique, but it's in KwaZulu Natal where the Zulu people were driven out um, by Shaka in those days. So when they were driven out, they ran to Mozambique and they met the Tonga, Tonga people. That is where the Tonga name come from. They met the Tonga people who are connected with um, the Nguni tribes, and the um, uh, Batwa. So that is how the, the, the Tonga was, was, was created from the Tonga people and the Zulu people when they met. And that's where we come from, the Tonga people. Okay, what about your mother's mother? Your mother's mother. My mother's mother she is um, from the Bantu people who were connected with the Suto, Suto people. They created um, the people whom we call the Edi Bapedi people now. So my mother's mother is from the, 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 the tribal uh, lineage of the Bapedi people who are in the northern parts of South Africa, which we call Limpopo now, which is um, a province in, in, in South Africa. It's, it's next to the borders of uh, Mozambique and Zimbabwe. That is the Limpopo region where the Bapedi people come from. So I, I am a mixture of uh, all the ingredients that form the South African people. Right, from both sides, the mother and the father. Right? From both sides, your mother's side and your father's side. That's where the mix yeah. comes in at, right? Yes, yes. So exactly where are the sand in South Africa? If someone wanted to visit, what area would they go to to find? Um, right now, you can find um, the sand because um, the, the, the Khoi sand it's, it's not actually one tribe. It's, it's two different tribes. It is the Khoi Khoi and the sand people. So now the Dutch people are the ones who, who, who made this um, confusion. They mixed the Khoi and the Sand people and made them as if it is one tribe. But the Sand people 
are the ones who were left here when the Dutch people came to South Africa. And the Khoi Khoi, they are the ones who didn't go along with what the Dutch people wanted to do with them because they were enslaving people when they got here. Um, they were using the Khoi and the sand people as um, workers on, on their farms, the farms that they created when they got here. So the sand people were the ones who were colonized more than the Khoi Khoi. So now you can find um, the sand people in the Northern Cape here in South Africa. You find them in the Northern Cape, the Western Cape, um, even in the Eastern Cape. But in the Eastern Cape, it, it's a different story because now they are mixed with the people that we call Hosa, Hosa people now. Um, I will explain that later. But when you want to, to, to visit them, you can find them mainly in the Northern Cape, the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape here in South Africa. But you find a vast so majority of them. Two so they saying are two different lineages, so to speak. Yes. They're not yes. together. It's not. It's not one group of people. It's two separate people. Because all, all through the internet, you hear them saying they don't separate the two. So people will assume that you're talking about one people when you're really talking about two different people, right? Can you, can you repeat that for me? I didn't get that. Okay, I was saying that the Khoi said different people, two different people. But if you yeah. look on the internet, they make it seem as if they're one people because they just say Khoi San. They don't break it down that Khoi is one tribe and San is another tribe. You, they make people assume yeah. that it's just one tribe. Because they put yes. the two names together, but they're really not the same. Oh, I they understand not. it. Yes. Because I always say the sand tribe, and then sometimes people will say, "Well, there's also called they also named the koi sand." And I'm I never really felt the koi part. It was always just sand. So I guess it depends on who's getting the information. Yes, there's there's also um, the, the the koi. Uh, Koi Koi people. So now um, the, the Dutch people and the English people are the ones who created yeah. this, um, the, the, this union saying they classify them under Koi Sen, but of which they, they, they are two different tribes. And even the language that they speak uh, it, it, it sounds the same, but there's, there's, there are differences here and there within the languages. Um, just like we have the, the, the Basutu people, Batwana people, and the Bapedi people here in South Africa. If you listen to that language that they speak, they all sound the same, but there are different meanings to different words that they speak but they all sound the same. Okay. So it's the same with um, the Khoi and the Sand tribe. They have um, a, a certain sound that they make when they speak, which will make you think that um, they, they, they speak in the same language, but it, it is not the same language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. What year did the Dutch invade South Africa? Actually, what year did the Dutch come in and start the mixing with the the Khoi Khoi and the sand? It was uh, in the 16th century, uh, 1652 to be precise. It was 1652, I think around April, 
um, there's, there's, there's this guy who arrived here in South Africa with three ships. Um, if my memory serves me well, it was Romedaris, Odewop, and Rachel. Those three ships were called Romedaris, Odewop, and Rachel. So Jan van Riebeck was 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 the the, the, the leader of, of, of that group that that arrived here in 1652. So when they arrived here, they found they they, they found um the, the the koi and the sand people they they were living together. Remember um the koi and the sand people are different from the Bantu people who hail from the upper parts of um, Africa. Here in the south, the Khoi and the Sand people were hunters and gatherers. They used to gather fruits, um, vegetables. They didn't do any farming. They didn't have um, herds of, of cattle and, and sheep and goats. They, they, they were just hunting and gathering fruits and vegetables and uh, surviving like that. So when 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 the Dutch people arrived here, they 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 found um, they arrived at, at 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 Cape of Good Hope. That's what they called it when they arrived, which is now called Cape Town, which is in the Western Cape Province. When they arrived there. They, they, they started um, their own little colony there and they found the Koi and the Sand people living there. Um, they started, as, as, as they were doing all over Africa, when they arrived, they started um, taking people from their places of comfort, making them slaves um, to come and work on their farms. Um, they were shipping them out of Africa selling them to uh, uh, other countries out, out there in, in, in the West. So when they arrived here, they, they, they started with the Khoi and the Sand people, um, trying to use them as, as slaves to, to, to come and work on their farms. So the Sand people were the ones who never fought back. The koi, the koi koi, mm -hmm. are the ones who who, who ran away from uh, that colony. They ended up in places like Botswana and Namibia, which is in the Kalahari Desert. Oh, wow, what happened? Just when the information is getting good, the call drops, the stream drops. That was a good history lesson, wasn't it? Uh, what's up, Makoko, right? Makoko Matsi? Am I saying your name right? You got your mic on, your mic is on, so I can't hear you if you're speaking. I am sorry about that. Yeah, but uh, you spelled my name correct. Makoko Muthi, yes. Okay. I like that. Makoko Muthi. Yes. We should have had those names more often in the Western Hemisphere. You know? When you say those African names, it wakes up the DNA inside of you. You know? You start connecting to the ancient seeds of yourself. When you have the English names, then you start thinking English. You know what I'm saying? Even English because you're dealing with the vibration of the name. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. I said, um, what coverage is down? What happened? Uh, you know, something else happened. 
Uh, I can't say, but uh, he is a bit far away from me. And uh, we have the situation in the country where we are having a load shedding. I am just afraid that uh, we must not find that he has been cut because of the load shedding and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's going to try and come back now. Yes, because... Uh, yeah, I love history. It was my like interesting. So you think that maybe they're listening to our conversation? <laughs> yes, I, I really wanted to know more about uh, this uh, African history and uh, more about him because uh, I met him uh, because I was, uh, he is a, a son of my friend who is now late. Okay. And uh, what happened is that uh, he he was the one now who is now more to me than his father. Then it was like I don't understand why th things like this happened. Um, I'm back now. I see, I see. Um, yeah, we, we, we have you a remember, problem. Do you remember where you were off? Yes, yes. Um, so our, as, as I was explaining, um, the, 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 the Dutch people, when they arrived here, they took the boy and the same people as their slaves them on their farm. But the, the, the Khoi, Khoi people um, rebelled against that and they, they moved away from um, the, the southern parts of, of that colony. That's why they ended up in like Botswana and Namibia, in the Kalahari Desert. So that's where you can find um, okay. the original Koi, koi people, they, they are still there, even though there's, there's, there's a few of them left now, but they are still there in, in, in the Kalahari. Uh, okay, so now he's back. What about, um, have you heard of the, the Kung tribe? K-U-N-G? The Kung. Yeah, have you heard of the the Kung K U yeah Kung right the Kung tribe? They look like the San and the the Koi Koi too. Yeah, in English yeah. we say Kung like Kung Fu, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I understand. Yes, I've heard about them, but um, I haven't uh, went into much research about them because um, mainly. I have, I've, I've been you look just like I look just like them. Did you, did you say I look just like yeah, them? They, they look like the sand people. Oh, oh no, no yes. I was saying that, um, that the, the home, they look like the sand people and the, the, um, the, the, the koi koi, they look alike. Yes. So um, I was wondering actually, is relation and how did they get a separate name? Actually, the, 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 there's, there's, there's a relation to many tribes here in Africa and even in the whole world. There's a relation to, 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 to the Poi and the, the, the Sand people. Because even if you can check from the researches that were done, um mainly when they're talking about their homo sapiens and and all the discoveries that they have made 
they they have discovered that the the, the koi people the koi and the sand people they were actually the the, the first people to, to to walk the earth before all these other people came but um that is that is a story for another day of which we will be talking about uh, the other people who arrived here on earth um and found the the, the koi and the sand people here on but yes um i i, I can relate to that Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I think another part of history that needs to be explored, definitely. Yes, definitely. Because I always see them as the same, but I know the name was different. And then they're in yeah. different geographic locations in South Africa, but just in different parts of South Africa. True, true. And, and how can, I found we... out about them was I found out <laughs> there, there was a bit of Go a breakage there. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't, I didn't okay, get the no, last the part there. There was a. No, I was just saying, finish saying what you were saying. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, we, we can trace, um, everyone's DNA back to the Koi and the Sand people. If, if 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 you go to the history of of Kemet, which we 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 call it, um, you will find that the, the, the people who discovered that place were actually the descendants of, of, of the boy and the sand people. Um, but then, when when you go to the the, the actual Geological uh, side of things, where where people are doing research and stuff, they they also include um, other people who became part of, of that discovery when when Kemet was discovered. But the real people who discovered Kemet were uh, direct descendants of the boy and the Hmm. So we can we can bring um, everyone DNA back to the boy and the Okay. 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 Do you think there's anything else we should know about Koi Koi and the Sun Tribe before we move on to the Um as 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 i said we will we will have to um preserve that for another topic because i i have a lot a lot to, to tell about these people and how they, they met um before 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 the dutch people came here how they met other African people, who, whom we call the, the, the Bantu. So, um, I think we will, we will leave that for for Okay. 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 How do you help people do the oracle and doing oracle reading, or what is the oracle for those who've never heard that word before and it's the first time they're hearing it? Um, I I I, I actually got the the, the the name of the oracle from people that I help. Um, there was there was a movie that. Late in, I think it was 2000 or 
2001, which was called the Matrix. So there was there was a woman there who was called um, the Oracle. She could see into the future, people and all that. So I didn't know about the movie, but people that I was helping, they they kept calling me. No, you are an artist. No, it's something that's true for us. It's something that's true what that woman does on that movie. Until I saw that movie, I realized, oh, it's what they meant when they called me. Um, but in, the volume in, in is out, a little low. You sound a little low. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to. Yeah, the volume is going high and low. Yeah, a little louder. So we can hear it clearly. Um, I was saying I got the name. Yeah, that's better. Yes, I got the name, the Oracle, from people that I help. They called me the Oracle um, because of the the movie that they saw, which 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 is called the Matrix. So there's a woman there who's called, yes. who, who's called Oracle on that movie. So they were comparing me to that woman. Yes. I yes. So that's how I got oh, the okay. name. Oh, okay. That's the good Yes, yes. So um, I, I just took it as, as a so nickname. The lady? Right. Right. I know the woman who wrote the Matrix and the Terminator. I said I'm very friends with the woman who wrote the Matrix and the Terminator. Her name is Sophia Stewart. Yeah, yeah. She's from um, the Bronx, but she lives lives in Arizona now. They, I have her come on the podcast, and I think that'd be yeah. a nice conversation. True, true. That would be that would this be one. Yeah, she created the oracle. She created the whole story. And yeah. She had to take um, she, took Holly, she had to take Hollywood to court because they stole. They tried to steal her movie. She went through a long battle with them, and she, you know, took them to court because they was, you know, presenting the movie as if they wrote it, and that's not what it was. They her manuscript was stolen back in the eighties, and when they stole the manuscript. Somehow we got into some wicked European Hollywood people hands, and then they started putting Terminator out, Terminator One, Terminator Two, all different parts. They started putting out different parts of the Matrix, and she took them to court, and she she has her um, 100% full copyrights, full trademarks. They're trying to buy the movie from, well, they're trying to buy the script from her, so to speak, and she's like, no, because the money that they're offering her. It's not enough because she knows her worth. Because she wrote this, she wrote the Matrix and the Terminator back in the eighties, when people wasn't on things like the cop, people wasn't on things like the numbers in the third time. And, you know, she was like really up her time. She's what we would call a prodigy child, someone who's like a super genius. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what she is. Yeah, that's yeah, what she yeah. is. So this is the book. This is the, the book with the actual script of the Terminator and the Matrix. And she, she actually sent the manuscript. When she actually typed it up back in the 80s, she sent me the manuscript. So that way, when you read it, you can see where they stole the, the story from. And it's mm. four words, but that's your script writing. Wow. Kind of hard to see. But yeah, um, she's a real, real powerful person. That'd be nice to have you and her on the platform together since you've been called the Oracle after a person that she created in the Matrix. You see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I share. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I got, um, the name, the Oracle. So I started using it on my work, 
um, on my books um, as, 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 as an author, I use it as an author name. Hence, my books are written the Oracle Guide, which means I, the Oracle, is guiding okay. people through, through, yeah. So, but in, 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 in my language, we, we have Inyanga and we have Lebone. Uh, Lebone is the Soto, but Bamoya also Soto, but Balestati also in Soto, which means people of the spirit, but Bamoya. Uh, but Ubalisedi, which is people of the light. Um, hence, I have a group which is called Children of the First Light. So everything that I do is with regards to what I am and, 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 and the case that I have been given by, 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 by my guides and my ancestors. Right, right. Yeah. So what type of oracle so, can... the, 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 the type of oracle that I am, I can say um, in simple terms, I, I can say I am a dream oracle. Because what I do is I interpret dreams. I help people through their own dreams. And I also have dreams that guide me into how I can um, help people and um, how I can heal. So everything that I do is mostly predominated by dreams. So I can say I am dream or a Mm -hmm. Plug this in before it shuts out. Okay. Look like we have a connection breakup. On on my side, it's still fine. I guess maybe it's on your side. Greetings, Mr. Muji. Hashi. Are you still there? Yes, Russell. Hashi. Hashi. <sighs> Is is there anything that you want to add, Mr. Muzi, while we wait for our host to fix the network problem? Uh, no, not really. But uh, I do think that uh, I'm learning a lot uh, from this visual. And uh, it won't be my last one. I will keep on following and then I'll keep on, uh, yes, watching at all the times. And thank you very much for the information given, for the light that you, 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 are, you are keeping, because I do think that uh, most people who are watching this or people that will get this, they will reala they realize their identity they will they will try to find more about themselves True. because it's like we are living and we are not knowing the purpose of our life the purpose of this life True. and uh, through your wait through what you are saying we now start to realize that we need to dig more in order to know about where we are coming from that is true and we should we should also realize that um this is not only my truth it is your truth and 
the next person's truth. Only if we agree with each other that what makes us human is uniquely one form, which is the spirit. The color, the ethnicity, and the, 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 the geographical uh, areas that we come from, they do not matter. Our truth will always be one as long as we all admit that we are one spirit. I thank you, Mr. Muti, for being part of um, this conversation. I can see our host is back yes. now. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it was my turn to get put out. To put, it was my turn to get dropped out of the stream. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes. It was my turn. Ooh. I don't even have to know is that I wasn't going to be actually trying. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So you were saying, you were explaining the type of readings that you do. Oh, you, 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 yeah, you explained that. Okay, so can yes, you give us like um, an example of um, the, a few examples of the type yes. of readings you've given people over the years? Yeah, um, I, I, I wanted to, 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 to get uh, into that. Um, there's, there's different types of readings that are done by different um, types of oracles and shamans, of which our gifts are the same because they serve the same purpose, which is to heal and help people realize um, their, their, their purpose in, on earth and also give people peace you know when 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 your 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 spirit is not settled within you that is when you start getting sick so mostly we we deal with the spirit first before we deal with the body that is how we heal the body so now we have um, different kinds of shamans or whereby you get your sangomas who use uh, bones. They, they, they throw bones on the ground, and from the bones, they, they, they can read um, anything that is happening with you Where, by, by, by connecting with the spirits, um, which are your ancestors, your guides, your gods. Um, the ones that are, 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 are with you in your journey here on earth. So what they do is they read from the bone. Those are the Sangomas who, um, who use um, the bone. And then we have the light workers who can Stay use... Bones uh those bones are, 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 are taken from different um kinds of animals um there's there's this misconception and a myth that there are also human bones used there or which is a lie um they, they they use animal bones which um mainly are the animals which are uh, valued as 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 totem animals within certain tribes in, in our African uh, culture. So those animals are, are, are known to be connected to, to, to certain tribes due to the value that has been placed on those animals as, as a totem of, of, of a certain tribe. So they are animal bones and they also use shells, shells from, from the sea. And there are rocks on, 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 on that mixture. I, I don't use 
um, phones. So I don't know what else they they add on to that. But um, the, this misconception of saying there are human bones and all that is just a myth. So um, moving along, there's there's also light workers. Um, which are people who who see through the spirit. They they, they also use um, things like water and fire. When they light candles, they can read um, the flame from the candle. Or the wood. When when they burn wood, they can read the flame from from that wood. But it, it, it has to be a certain type of wood, a certain type of plant that is used there for them to be able to read um, that flame. And then you get people like me, who are the dream workers. We are the ones that use meditation. We, we, we meditate a lot. That is how we connect with um, the, the, the spirit world. And we also dream. You know, we use dreams to, 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 to connect with, with, with the other side. And yeah, that is, that, is, that is the type of oracle that I am, uh, the type of, of, of work that I do, um, which is a bit different from the Sangomas and, and, and the light work. Okay. So what are the um, areas of work that you do within the Oracle readings? Is that the only thing? Or there's other, um, um, how can I put it? methods that you use i was i was also fortunate enough to meet uh people like ubaba credo mutua he's, he's he's a famous shaman who has just passed on last year he was well known here in south africa i don't know if you've heard about him so those are some of the people who, who gave me um, certain knowledge or, 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 or I can say certain gifts that I use in, in, in the process of, of healing people. So I was also raised by, by, by my grandmother who was a herbalist. She, she was not a Sangoma, she was not a light worker or an oracle. She was just a herbalist. She knew herbs. She, she, she would go to, to the fields, um, the mountains, and pick up some herbs, come back, cook the herbs, and help people, and people were being healed by her. So she used to take me along sometimes when she went to the mountain to go and pick up the, the wood, and she would teach me uh, how they work. So through, through, through that um, university, I call it a university because it, it, it's knowledge that I acquired um, without book, without, with, without a lecturer. Um, I got that knowledge from, from the ancient people, people who, who, who were carrying knowledge that has been passed on to them. By, by, by their ancestors. And also from dreams, as I said, I, I do meet um, the entities which are uh, helping me, my guide uh, through my dreams, I meet them and they show me certain things that can help um, people. So that is how I work. So is that what your dream books are about? Um, my dream books, especially the ones that I have just released, 
now recently, which is um, the Oracle's Guide to Dream Interpretation, uh, Volume 1 and 2. They, they are a guide to people because um, I, I, have, I have so many people who call me on a daily basis wanting um, interpretations for their dreams. More especially in the morning, when I wake up, I receive calls. Somebody just wakes up and calls me then wanting me to um, explain their dreams. So that is where the idea of um, the Oracle's Guide to Dream Interpretation came from. Um, I realized that if I write a book where I teach people how to interpret their own dream, then I will have less work on my hands to do. People will go to the book and read and um, have clues about how to interpret their own dream. And on volume two, that is where I explain the symbols within your dream. That is where you will learn um, how these symbols work and what they mean. When, when you dream about the certain thing, like the, the animal, or, 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 or you dream about water, or you dream about the moon, the sun, the stars, all those things, they have meaning. So on volume two, that is where I explain each and every category. That if you dream about this, this is what it means. And then people can be able to interpret their own through my book. So the, the volume one basically helps people uh, break down their dream if they're not for sure what the dream means. So they always go to your book and I guess go to that that chapter and it could basically give them the answers that they need. That is exactly what uh, the book is about. So I tried, I tried and by all value. means. I, I was saying I tried by all means to, to, to make um, the book as simple as I can so that anyone can read it. Um, as, as, as you can notice, I am not English. Um, English is not my mother tongue. So I, I try to, to accommodate uh, people who are like me who do not speak English that well. So I wrote it in the simplest way that I can without using the big words that I don't even <laughs> understand what they mean. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just a simple book that is a step-by-step -step guide into um, dream interpretation. Even a toddler can read it and he will understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so is that simplified? Yeah. Okay, that's good too. And then the volume is basically as people interpret if there was um, a color house or a certain color car or a group of people with the same colors on, they can go to volume two to find out what those symbols mean as far as colors and shapes and I guess if it was raining outside or something like that. That is true. Um, on volume two, I break down every aspect of your dream, um, every symbol that you made. Not, not uh, necessarily all of them, but the ones that I know that are mainly common within people's dreams because I receive a lot of calls from people who, who do not understand their dream and they want interpretation from me. So 
when when I I, I, I look at their dreams, mostly they, they they talking about the same things, but their dreams um, mean different things. So that is where I pick up the most important symbols that people mainly dream about. And I, I, I put them in volume two and explain what we mean. Right, right. So I'm contacting Sophia Stewart now. She told me to give her a Okay. And I, I I have other books which are not yet released, but they 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 are available for pre-order on on Amazon. Um, I've 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 written a short story um, collection. It, it's a book that contains ten short stories. Those short stories um I, I i got from my ancestors um, my grandmother who raised me some of them they, they they are the stories that she used to tell me and also some of the stories are the ones that i took from the Hoi people when i met them communicating with them trying to find out about their lineage and 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 their origin. So I I took those stories and used my creativity on them. Here and there I put some fiction just to make them interesting. But the, the, the facts are there. If you, you read them you hear that oh this, this is um, African folklore but in, in, in the oracle style. So I, I use my own creativity on those stories. So that book will be released um, on, on the 13th of October. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I have to ask you, what inspired you to write the short stories and the, um, the what is it, short story? and best for children, for adults and children, right? Yes, yes. Um, as, as, as I said, um, I, I, I was raised by my grandmother and my grandmother was, was a storyteller. Whenever we went to the mountains to go uh, pick up some herbs, she, she would tell me all kinds of stories. And some of those stories, um, they are the, 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 the African folklores, which are told within every family in, in, in our tribes, our different tribes. So I, I, I carried those stories from my childhood up until now as a, as a grown man, I was thinking, no, um, I have to keep this uh, knowledge that was passed on to me and give it back to, to the generations that are, 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 are coming because um, if, if I die with this knowledge um, our children will be lost in the future without knowing such stories because the importance of those stories you can see in the people that we became now as, as a grown man like this i was raised by those stories they created this man that you're seeing now and this man that we are with now uh, who has joined us here mr mapo he knows about those stories he was raised by those stories too. so every african man has to keep that 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 knowledge alive and he has to pass it on to his children. So I decided like Baba Kredo Mutra, we who has decided to, to give his knowledge to the world. I also decided the same that I will give my knowledge to the world. So that's what inspired um the, 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 the short story. 
Oh, okay. So it was short stories that you grew up on or you created these short stories from your own imagination? No, I, I didn't create them from my own imagination. I, it, it's the short stories that I, I got from my ancestors, my grandmother and, and, and the other uh, people that I met, um, like I said, the Koi people whom I met and they, they taught me some of the things that I know and I got such stories from them. The only thing that I did on those stories was to put my creativity on the stories, just to make them interesting. Because um, there are certain instances whereby when they were telling me the stories, they would tell me about a god. Now, when I write the story, I do not call them the gods, I call them aliens. So that is where I, 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 I use my creativity. I think you're breaking up right now. We can't. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, it's better. Much better. Yeah. Uh, as, as as I was saying, that's um, I got my 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 stories from my ancestors and the, the the people who trained me and those who are still training me now. So the only thing that I did to the stories, I just used my creativity to make them interesting. But I didn't change. The, the 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 core of, of, of the story. The narrative. Okay. Yeah. The narrative is still the same. You just hide it a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm 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 an artist okay. by nature. I, I actually do paintings and sculptures, so creativity is my thing. So you did the book cover for your your children's and adults nighttime stories. You did the cover for that too. We can hear you. If I, I there was the one that I, I, I did with a man holding a child. That's me and my son on that picture. And now I've changed it and and, and, okay. and placed a picture of okay. me of me and my son in the library. Um, I'm holding a book reading to him on that cover. So yes, I do all my covers. So you did the dream interpretation cover as well? All of them. Okay, because that looks like you went to the um, the whole area and took a nice picture of the landscape for the right one and right two. It looks like. I was saying it looks like you went to a remote area and you took a picture of that landscape, maybe from a far distance and zoomed the camera in to make it look semi-close. <laughs> I think the connection. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess it's his turn now. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> it's his turn now. <laughs> yes. And, it looked like you're going to stay strong. When is my turn? That's what I'm saying. It looks like your connection is steady and strong. I don't think you have a time. Because your <laughs> connection is very good. No, thanks. We hear you clear. There's no breakup. No breakup when you speak in nothing. Everything's fine. Long distance. I, I will ask you the side of two uh, different. We on both. We on... Yeah, I was saying, I will, I will ask you, what you next say? time. I was saying I will I will ask him next time to come to my place because I've got a very strong connectivity. Yes, I mean like everything is pristine with you. I hear you perfectly <laughs> clear. No, I like it. Thank you. <laughs> so your good friend here was your and good actually, friend here actually, was saying that the next time you live stream. Your good friend I must said go to his time you live stream, you wouldn't need to. Yes, <laughs> yes, because he has never, he never get kicked out of the studio. And him click every time he speaks, he has a, a nice speech. Even me, I'm the host, I get put out of the studio and he's still streaming. <laughs> so he has a very strong connection. I think he's, he's, he's using. I he's guess using you pay fight. for what you get, right? That's true. <laughs> I think it's you using 5G. Oh, okay, I'm, okay. I'm still on the low. I'm, I'm, I'm on 4G. Oh, okay. Well, even with 4G, it should be good, you know? But it's breaking but yeah, up. Yeah, maybe uh, we have to make that happen. You can go to... Can you hear me now? <laughs> Yes, I can hear you. You hear me now? Loud and clear. Oh, okay, I was saying, um, we got to, yes, I was saying that you got to make that connection and next time you come to live stream, we can do a little bit yes, so you don't have to be at his house at 2.30 in the morning or whatever. <laughs> you can maybe in the afternoon yeah. how your schedule looks, but you just let him, let us know what your schedule looks like in the daytime. So that way, um, Everybody is good to go. True. No, I'll I'll, I'll go and, you know? and borrow his root and bring it to my house. <laughs> but then he won't be able to join the live stream because you'll have <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you. Let me ask you a question about the folklore. Is some of the folklore real, or is it all a mess? Does it come from real people experiences? Because I think some of the folklore is real. It's all made up it to be some type of um, truth to it. There's a little stretch in its imagination. You feel like let. I always feel that they're real. It's just um, people take it over time and they add on to the story or they take away from the story. But there is a premise of it coming from a truth and then it, it shoots out and branches and then people add on as the centuries go by. People add on more to the story, but the base of it, I feel there's some truth to it. You know? That is true. That is true. Um every every folklore is derived from actual events um things that happened a long time ago um you can count many centuries so as generations come like i said with me now i am writing the same stories with my own style of writing 
I'm using my own uh, creativity to the same story. So there, there is a bit of dilution here and there within the story, but the, the, the context of, of, of the story remains the actual facts that happen. It's just that how you tell the story is what changes uh, the whole thing into becoming a myth. Um, we can make an example whereby they 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 they, they speak about um, <clears throat> the, 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 the 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 breeds that were half human and half animal. Um, most of us now we do not believe that there was there was a a, a breed that was uh, half fish half human uh, half horse half human we we don't believe in that because we don't see that happening um biologically uh, we don't see any explanation to that uh, biologically but the people who were telling those stories they were telling those stories according to certain events that happened then that 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 um, made them see uh, such things living with them. Um, when when you go to one of the stories in in, in my book, um, I think it's story number three. It's titled "The Color Blue in Their Eyes." Um, you will you will hear how the gods created other human beings from the genes of human beings and animals, mixing them together. When the experiment went wrong, at some point, such breeds were born. That is where you find um, someone who came as half animal, half human, until they they got to the point whereby they created the perfect being that they wanted to create. But before that, their experiments were were were, were not that perfect. They were going wrong here and there. That is where those things came about, and. Our ancestors saw that. They witnessed it. That is how they they, they even recorded such things on on on, on uh, rock painting. If, if if you can you can go to the northern Cape where the Khoi and the Sand people used to live. In those caves where they used to live in, there are rock paintings where you find half human, half fish depicted on that rock and if you date those paintings they date back to 15 20 000 years ago so that that tells you uh, this person was so you're talking was about mermaids yes yes i'm talking about uh mermaids those people were not hallucinating when they they, they, they they painted those pictures and they were not imagining those things. Those are records of things they encountered, things they saw. Why would, would they paint themselves hunting animals and then go and paint an a, 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 a half human, half animal. What what is what is the, the the basis of that? What what's the meaning of that? Why would they do that? Because they are trying to record something there, so that when someone comes there, can see what was happening where they were living. That is those those are our history books. Those. Um, rock paintings are our history books that's where we go to find out where we come from and what was happening before we came to, to, to existence so 
it 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 facts mixed with uh, creativity just to make the stories interesting because i write um books for adults and children i i also want the children to enjoy the story hence um my slogan on on that book is called it, 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 it says a story a night keeps the nightmares away you know i i do not want to scare the children when they read my book that is why i use um some sort of creativity here and there you can call it fiction but the affect within um those stories so if someone wanted to consult with you you guys let's say their spirit guides or the ancestors that passed on the grandma their parents if their parents passed away um you would like them to email you yes um they can use my email uh they can also use um my inbox on 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 facebook i i also accommodate um certain people on whatsapp so if they get my number they can contact me on whatsapp and then that 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 how i am reachable for, for okay. now i don't know other media um as as i land in technological thing i will i will add more or more medium more channel on youtube channel um the the youtube channel now it it it, it no longer working it, it used to work before but now it has been shut down because um there were certain technicalities which i'm still in help from the it who knows about it because i'm i'm too dead when it comes to uh, technology so yeah i'm receiving help but as soon as back online and i can um in computer so let me ask you a question about um fairies and unicorns are you familiar with them is that a part of african folklore lepan smurfs <laughs> you know um all those mythical creatures that we don't see normally right now but we we have a feeling that they may have existed at one point in time because they all over cartoons they were a, any kind of um, fantasy fairy tale movies we see them in the movies yes um actually actually um those those um creatures or or, or I don't know what to call them. Um they they they've been there within these um stories, these folklores for, for for a long time. I think um the only thing that um got us confused is the fact that other people came and took those stories and made them their story. They changed the name in uh, into their language um you're talking about fairy we have um things like uh wo matindane we have um things like um ikoloshi which which are the smurfs that you're talking about um that 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 actually the people that we call the koi koi they have uh short 
short guys which we call masarwa um those those are the smurfs that you, you you're talking about so I, I i am quite familiar with those but in in, in different names because um, those i guess they are english names and we don't know how they came about but we right. in, here in africa right. we also have similar similar um stories so you have to go to the forest deep 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 into the forest and then actually go through a portal to get into the smurf realm is that how it south africa um we we believe that uh, the, the 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 spirit world um other realms of existence they actually exist parallel to the reality that we we exist in. so we do not have to go deep into the forest or into the caves or inside the water you don't have to do that as long as you have uh, the, the mechanisms and the ability to tap into those realms then you can you can actually experience um those those those, those guys you can meet them <laughs> if i may say okay through meditation okay. through meditation I know, like, uh... mm. I know in the and in the, in the storybooks and on TV, you have to go deep into the forest, and then you'll run into this portal, put into the Smurf realm, or into the fairy realm, or to see a unicorn, you have to go far out into the mountain top. You know, a whole a, what maybe seven days travel away from town to find these mythical features because they don't want to just show themselves like how we see each other every day because they know that humans are not nice humans like to take them put them in the zoo humans like to take them and run experiments on them and don't treat them right so you have to go far places to find them because they're not really at reach you know yeah because we like colonizing we colonize everything we even want to colonize the gods <laughs> you know um we we also have such places in africa <laughs> where it is believed that if you go there it is a sacred place that you can meet the gods there we have a place in limpopo called modimole it, it's a mountain it's a sacred mountain whereby when you go there you have to be clean because it is believed that when you go there if you are not clean you are not pure in your heart and you you've got evil thoughts and all that you won't return so it, it is believed that when you go there that is where you meet um such such things that you're talking about the portal where you can tap into the other side um and and experience um the the, the, the other beings that are living there so here in africa the we do have we're going for the mermaid we would go yeah, with po 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 the mermaid yeah i said that would be yes. the same thing for the mermaid you would have to go to a certain body of water um at a particular yeah. time of the night and order to see the mermaid they don't just present themselves just like that actually actually and we a lot have, of people have said that actually we have healers said they were drowning and the mermaid saved them yes um actually we have healers who who use water to heal people so normally where they get their water is in such places um they will tell you there's mong one mate like um the owner 
of 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 that well or that river they they, they call it moon one may so what happens is what before they go and fetch that water to come and heal people with they they have to do certain rituals to ask the owner of of, of that well moon one may they have to ask that uh, that owner uh, for permission to take that water so that they can come and use it to heal people. So there is that that uh, belief that um, those those entities do exist, but in certain um, waters, not in every well or stream or river that you find. There are certain places where they will tell you that there's a snake in there. Some of them they call it a snake. They will tell you there's a snake in there, and then you'll know there is the owner of that place. Right. Right. Because I have um, seen documentaries and TV shows that, like, these are real life experiences that people are talking about. This is like a cartoon or an animated show. This is real people in real time speaking about their encounters with, like we're talking about the mermaids now, like fishermen, for instance. A lot of fishermen were saying that um, if their ship was to sink, sometimes the mermaids will come and take them from drowning. Or get lost in some thunderstorm or whatever, die back you know, on their route, so they can safely. Actually, there are... So, uh, um, and these are the people that, regular people like you and I, giving these testimonies. I don't think they're all lying. Like, everybody doesn't tell the same lie. You yeah. know, as the elders would say, everybody can't be telling the same lie. And these people were living in different parts of the world. So, and they don't know each other, but they're telling stories. They are same thing with the fairies. People have said that they built fairy houses. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. There, there are shamans here in Africa who have been initiated by such entities. Um, you, 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 you have people who go missing for for days and months. Their families not knowing where they are. They go all over looking for them until they go to a certain uh, prophet or a shaman who throws the bones on the ground and tells them that no, your your family member is underwater is is being initiated by a snake or Mungwame, the owner of of the web so those are true stories it, it, it's not something that is being made up because we see those people have been lost for, for, for months and then they come back to attest to the same thing that the prophet has said you know they they tell their families i was underwater i saw such and such and this is what was happening to me and they come back with this and they are able to help people, they heal people, they do miracles with the powers that they got from underwater. So it, it, it can't be just a story or, 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 or lies because it's something that somebody experienced and they come back to attest to. Yes, exactly. Um, there's a and you can tell when a person is, is lying. And some of these people, they talk from their heart. They talk from the depths of their soul. And you can hear it in their voice, you see it in their demeanor. You see it in, you know, like they know, know what they saw, know what they experience. You know what mm. I mean? Same applies to the- nothing that you can tell them to, to change their um, mind. That's true. Mm-hmm. 
same applies to the UFO encounter. Let's for a second. I just want to ask you a question. Okay. Wait, hold that thought for one second because Sophia, Sophia said tomorrow she would like to meet you. So I want to find out at what time tomorrow will you be available that we can do a stream yard like this, but we won't be live. That way you can meet each other. What time uh, will you go tomorrow? You are six I'm super excited. Here. I feel like screaming right now. Like, hold on. Let me put my mute on. Don't scream. It's, 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 it's in the middle of the night where I am. People will wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I did already. I just put my mic on mute. Don't worry. <laughs> you you are so six like, hours two o'clock. Uh, if 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 it's two yeah. o'clock on your side, on my side, eight o'clock. I think it, it's fine. Right. It's o'clock. I'm, I'm asking you to be telling asking her this okay so i'm going to confirm it and we'll we'll sort it out tomorrow don't worry and i'll send you another yard link so and things I like that i think it'd be a nice a nice dialogue and you got to bring um you got to be on the 5g network so you know your brethren has to be there. <laughs> I'm I'm going I'm going to to Mr. Muti's house. He's he's listening. I'm going to okay, his house. Okay, going to be at his house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> so I'm going to confirm it. The time. It'll definitely be tomorrow. When what time tomorrow? Okay, you were saying um aliens. Yes. Um I was saying the same right, thing uh, applies to Yes, um, the same thing applies to people who have had encounters with, with aliens. When they come out to tell their story, um, no one believes them. And that creates a lot of um, depression and stress towards those people because they know their truth. They know what they have experienced. But when they come out to, to, to the masses out there, they, 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 they are viewed as people who have just lost it or something. So that is why um, in, 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 in most cases, the truth is hidden from the people because those who want to speak the truth are suppressed and they put down. Crazy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that is that is why most of the things, um, even even the media, media has 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 a major 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 role in in, in this um, propaganda and brainwash because whatever they say on TV, everyone believes. If they say um, that this uh, African folklore are a myth. Everyone is going to believe that it's a myth. But those who know, those who have yeah, experienced know. those things, they, they know that it's true. Just because uh, the main influencers are saying it's not true, then everyone believes that it's not true. Because a few years ago, um, at Miami airport, there was a wormhole near the airport. Actually where the airport is, the wormhole was there and they had to delay and cancel a lot of flights because of that wormhole. And NASA knows that means that there is some extraterrestrial beings that came through that wormhole 
and they didn't want to have any flights taken off that night, that whole day basically, until that wormhole left the sky. They know if they they know if the planes would go off, the planes probably would have gone. You know, but they tell you that it's not real. But I have a video. I can send you the video of this wormhole. I think it was back in 2014. This is not long ago. This is just recently. Several wormholes here in Florida, the Carolinas, different parts of America. There's a lot of UFO activity. Places like North Carolina, the mountains have a heavy concentrated um, sightseeing of UFO. I'm about people that live in different parts of the state. Some people live north, some people live south, and they see the same thing at the same time. But they live in two different directions, four or five hours away from each other. All right? And they all experience the same thing. So how can that be a lie? Yes, right here in America. Yes, yes. They all experience it at the same day, around the same time. If they're in the same time, it was the same day, the same time. They're just like three, four hours away from one another. And these people don't know each other because like I said, they live three or four hours away from each other. So they can't say, let's create this lie. And before you know it, it's like 80 people. It's like 80 people from a certain location saying the same thing. And these people range yeah. from old people to middle-aged people to young people. Saying the same and exact thing at the same time on the same exact day. You'll find that it's not only 80 people, there are more, but uh, some of them are afraid to come out because they, the they, they know. The, the, yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. 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 Not more. I but see those people. Uh, we I think, see you know? Carol says she saw a few fairies. I, I I would like to to, to hear. Uh, That's more my daughter. On, on that. Oh oh yeah. Maybe maybe uh, she should contact us <laughs> and, and tell us exactly what she saw. I know. I was trying to get her to come to the live stream. She said maybe next time. She just wants to yeah. listen. Some people just wants to listen, you know. I guess uh, <laughs> next time, next time. Yeah, we, we do, yeah I'm gonna put that in. We're gonna put that in the chat. Tell her, tell us her experience in the chat. The origins of 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 human beings. I think we should also include um, the UFO. They have um, a lot. Say that again, because you were breaking up horribly. Uh, I was saying next time we, we 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 do the live stream again when we will be talking about the gods and the origins of uh, human beings. I think we should also include um, the UFO topic. Oh yes, oh yes. Just like like how we're speaking on it now, we can get a lot more deeper because then I can show some videos of the wormholes I was telling you about and show you some videos where people living in different directions, four or five hours away from each other, talking about the same sighting. And there's and people they, who say they no, was abducted, yeah. were taken away from these, they were taken first, brought into the spaceship, some of the aliens are good and some of them was bad. You got good and bad and everything. So some of the, the bad ones were taking them and doing experiments on them, taking their ovaries, you know, um, taking blood from them and things like that. So it, it goes like from the negative to the positive. Just like you have a good doctor, you have a bad doctor, you got good teachers, lawyers, bad lawyers. Sure. Good people, bad people, like that, you know. I've I've got a similar story. And then there's um, some places. In my story book. 
um, whereby uh, some people were abducted and experiments were done on them. But um, we'll talk about that when when my my book will be released. Um, in October, so that I can talk about something that people have read and they can relate to what I'm talking about. I just don't want to give away um, all the details. I want people to go buy my books and read them. Oh, okay. Right, right. I'll put the book link back up there as well so you can see it. Um, what did I do with it? Yeah, and then there's some places here in America, um, on the west, the west part of America or the Midwest. Places like um, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, California. And even places on the east side of America, like Virginia, the Carolinas that I was talking about earlier, where there's a certain mist that comes in the air, a rain will come, the clouds will start moving extremely fast. And then there's this creature that comes out of this, this portal from the atmosphere. And they call this, this creature the wolf man, where he's, a wolf, but it looks like a man because he walks on two feet. You know, he's, he walks on twos and not fours. And this wolf man lives in these forests, deep in the forests, deep in the woods of the pine woods, where it's just nothing but pine trees, or pine forests. And certain times of the night, a lot of the hunters and the local people, they know not to go into these woods so that this creature is released, you know? So one of the elders was saying that he feels it hard that when this atmosphere changed like that, the fast clouds, the moon, the little, little that that's when this comes from one to the next. Stories all over America, certain places, like rural areas, woods and forests, where people have experienced different types of creatures, like the Sasquatch that they call Bigfoot. They have another one yes, called the Devil I've Man. Heard, I've heard of it's so uh, different. Story, you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, these things are not only happening in. In, 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 in one place. Um, I think they, they're happening all over the world. It's just that um, the people who tell our stories, um, especially the, 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 the mainstream um, media, um, they are the ones who decide what, what to tell the people and what to keep away from the people. And whenever they tell such stories, they make it as if it is just um, a fiction or something for entertainment. Because I've seen so many UFO shows that have been aired on TV. They, they, they come out as, as, as fiction, even though it's a documentary, but there is an element of, of, of making you doubt what you are seeing there. And they are doing that deliberately just to make you see that yes. Uh, yes. We, are, we are notifying people about this. We are airing this thing. We are informing people that this is what is happening out there. But it's not necessarily true. So that, that's what they're trying to instill in our heads, that even though people are coming out saying, I have been um, seeing this and that, I've experienced this and that, but there is a psychological problem somewhere which needs to be dealt with. So they, they create a form of a doubt um, at the same time. Right. Right, right. And there's also a place called Marlene's, Louisiana. I don't know if you're familiar with New Orleans. The French, New, or New Orleans. The French pretty much dominate. 
Yes, Louisiana, New Orleans. There's a creature called a Rougarou. And the Rougarou was brought here from France. He came from Europe. So the French supposed to have brought this creature from France to the Americas, you know, during the slavery time when the French was running and ruling over New Orleans. And, and there's a particular wood that this Arugaroo dwells in. And you know that you know when he's around because he'll eat up all of the cattle. And there's a certain way that he devours the cattle. It's not like a typical wolf or a typical bear. The way he devours the cattle is just like very beastly like. You know, very humane type of type of thing, and that's how they know when the Rougarou has been on their property because they'll wake up the next day and their cattle will be basically, you know, mutilated. You know, their horses, cows, whatever it is that they have. So, um, this the Rougarou. A lot of people would say they didn't believe him. They don't believe that it exists. But when you talk to the elders of that community, it don't matter. If you believe in their Rougarou or not, because their Rougarou is real. So what you believe is one thing, but what is is another. So you can't tell those Rougarou don't exist because they have firsthand encounters with this thing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. And there's actually it's evidence of this of get utilized some type of way it's not just a normal cat it's not a normal dog it's not a normal wolf or a bear that's doing this it's not a human it's the, the way this arugaroo the arugaroo is like a werewolf but it's a man type werewolf you know it's not the regular werewolf that we see it's some you know real evil thing you know and the way he devours the cows and the horses and the dogs when he goes on his prey for food or you know the way he devours Which, it that's how it was the, the creature uh, type of being yeah, yeah i didn't know it was him it was the woo because the way the cattle was so you know humiliated and in this story like i said hey, this beast here. See? So that's a deep, that's a deep um subject in itself. Because it is it's normally a European folklore. It's a European tale. But for some reason, it crossed over the waters from France to New Orleans, and people are you know, it's a bad experience, you know. You know even people have even saw it. It's not just their cattle getting mutilated. People actually say they saw it with their eyes. Eyewitnesses see this happening. Or they hear it outside actually, growling and things like that. It, it's not only in New Orleans. And it's you a swamp. might find in, in Africa, in other parts of Africa, they, they, they experience such creatures. If you go to places like Tanzania, there is a creature there which um, is similar to the, the, the Bigfoot that uh, you just mentioned earlier. It's a very um, creature which is tall and big. Yes. Uh, it looks almost, almost like um, a, a bear. But it's not a bear. It, it, it has a some sort of uh, human face, but it, it, it's got fur all over right. its body. So the, these it's things are big. there all, all, all over the world. It's just that, uh, like we said, uh, people who experience these things, they they don't they don't normally come out uh, to the public and, and talk about these things because they are afraid of being called crazy. Mm. Exactly. But people in China have a big people in India have a big foot. Europe, America's Africa, mostly every continent on the planet or every island, every 
body of water where there's a, 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 a land there. They speak of this Bigfoot. And you have people that investigate Bigfoot and they say that Bigfoot travels. He travels through the Americas, through Canada, through the Bear Strait, into Asia, and you know, they travel, they have a path that they follow. And it's the breeds of them. It's not just one type of Bigfoot. It's different breeds. Some have red hair, some have brown hair, some have black hair, you know? Some of them come in family groups where you see a, a woman Bigfoot, the baby and the husband. The Native Americans yes. of America, they talk about the Bigfoot, but they call him Sasquatch. The Native That's Americans like human being. They call him if, Sasquatch. If, if you trace um, the, 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 the human origin, um, we are all from Africa. Life started in Africa. Uh, that is where we will be talking about uh, the original um, human beings, the, the, the Koi and the sand people, um, whom they call the Homo sapiens now, these scientists. But from there, from Africa to America, Europe, Australia, Asia, how did all these human beings end up there if they all started here in africa so you can see that the migration of human beings is also similar to the migration of of, of animals and beast creatures that we're talking about i think um next time when we yeah. when we we, we talk about uh, the gods and the origin of of, of of human beings this is where i will reveal Setting things about how these creatures, some of them, because I don't know all of them, but some of them, how they were created and how they came to be um, extinct or invisible now. Because some of them, we think they are extinct, they, they, they no longer exist, but they do exist, they're hiding somewhere or they have moved to other dimensions. But we will explain that when we we have um, the topic about the origins of human beings and the God who came here on Earth, intermingled with the people and did what they did to create what we're seeing now, which we call civilization. We'll get to that. And could also pretty much touch on the different galaxies outside of the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, which have different forms. Of forms. Like you have the lion people, you have people that look like lions. Like I have people that look like they come from a tribe. They they have a, a lion type of look to them. Then I make some people. And, the, and these people that looks like lions, they happen to be Leos. And then I'll meet people that are Pisces and some of them look like fish. And then I may meet some people that are Sagittarius and they have legs like horses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the Sagittarius is half man, uh, half horse. We call it a centaur. Uh, yeah. Look, look, look at all these gods that are depicted there in the pyramids of Giza in, in, in Egypt. You have gods who are animal I don't think those people were playing when they, they, they were painting those, those hieroglyphs. They call them hieroglyphs. Um, I don't think they were they were just doing that fun. There's, there's a meaning to that, and there's a, there's a truth behind all those heritage. Because um, if you haven't seen some, you haven't encountered something, you won't use it with that much seriousness and authenticity. You, 
you can only do with your imagination what this entertains and then you go away with it. something that you want to leave as a legacy for other generations to come and discover it it has to be true it has to be something that really happened something that really was there so now when we the the the, 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 the scholars of of the ancient um, knowledge of, of, of african uh we come and talk about these things as the real things uh people just see us as the I, I I don't want to say that word here, but yeah, that's how they see us. Right, as animals, is what you mean to say, right? They have like a derogatory definition of us, you know? Although I think that they know better, they just want to make themselves feel good to think negative and speak negative. True. Because um, objecting, objecting makes them uh, feel important or somehow, I don't know, or them superior or above others. But the truth has to be laid down, has to be laid down on the everyone. There is. Oh, you breaking up at G's going on to 2G. <laughs> <laughs> you were breaking up with that last sentence. <laughs> yes. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because now I'm gonna get kicked out of the studio because I said that. Watch me get kicked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was saying the truth. The truth to be told, the regardless of those who feel superior when they object for no reason, you know, the truth just has to be told. People who know the truth, people who are the custodians of it, people who, yeah. who, who are tasked to carry these messages to, to, to make sure that um, the, the, the coming generation receive these messages. It's their duty they must do it. You know, I, I've been given a gift. I am using my gift. I'm not withholding it just because there are people who are objecting it. If you object to something, yes, object to it, but give other people the freedom to use it if they want to use it. Because we are different people and different folks for different folks. So exactly. even every person has something that works exactly. for them. Let have and then it will work for you. If you feel that it doesn't work for you, then this without causing uh, anyone Say that last part because you break it. Last you just said, oh, I didn't hear you well. Um, I was I was saying if if you object to something, you just distance yourself from it, and then let other people use it if it works for them. Yes, let others yes. embrace it who wants to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I see it like that as well. Because not everybody is going to see it from a mental perspective. It's like they have to see it to believe it. And most of the time, they're never going to see it in their lifetime. Only because they don't believe. So when you don't believe it, and you don't know it in your heart for it to be true, then you will never get to see it in its real life form. And even though I never actually saw a unicorn, I know that unicorns exist. And I think they're still here now. We just access them. 
I don't have to necessarily see it to know in my heart of hearts that it exists, you know? It's just a, a, it's an ancient that you have to tap into in order to understand it. We are all a part of one entity, which is um, God. You know, we did it. The religious people call it God, but we have other terms for it. So we are all part of one consciousness. We have different housings for this consciousness. The housings, I mean our brains, you know, because your brain is the one that houses that uh, consciousness. So each and every one of us can take in a certain amount of, 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 of experience and knowledge. And they can also give out a certain amount of that. But collectively, when we come together, we form one consciousness. So now, when you have something that you know, and I don't know, that doesn't make you better than me and that doesn't make me a fool or, 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 or someone who is stupid it just says yeah. that we are different parts of the same consciousness and you cannot know it all no one knows everything even every one of us has a certain amount of certain amount of knowledge they have. That's right. And when they bring it to the table, we become one consciousness, one God. Yes. Like how we can talk about levels and we're under one thought, you know? Or we can talk about the Smurfs and we're under the one thought. Not everybody would yeah. have a conversation with, though. I wouldn't just have a Smurf conversation with anybody. I wouldn't just have a uniform conversation with everybody because I understand not everybody is on the same frequency and we have to meet yeah. people where they at. So if I know you're not on that Smurf frequency, if I know you're not on a fairy vibe, I'm not going to bring that conversation to you. You would have to bring it to me and then yeah. I'll say, Mr. 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 right Mr. here with a fish if, of if his you're not showing me that top when you started talking about Murph. But because he is of the same caliber, <laughs> he's still off. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Belgian call them. The Dutch and the Belgians, <laughs> they call them Smurf. If you want to see a Smurf, you can go to Belgium because that's that's supposed to be the home of the Smurfs in Europe. They say if you want to see yeah. fairies and leprechauns, you have to go to Ireland because it's the home of fairies. Ireland, Ireland is the home of leprechauns. It's a very yeah. mythical yeah. place, very mystical. I but when you, if you my, go to my... Ireland and you talk about fairies, you can go anywhere. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, it was, it was just something that was discussed. I was saying my son uh, liked uh, the movie about the Smurf. That's, that's how I, I, I came to know that there are things that are called Smurf. Here in Africa, we call them in the Oh, you saw the movie? Yeah, my son made me watch that yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the Smurf. They used to have a cartoon that come on every Saturday morning when I was a child. So I grew up seeing this thing, you know, watching this cartoon and learning about fairies and leprechauns, twice, what we call dwarf, you know. In Ireland, they say you can go anywhere in yeah. Ireland and have a fairy conversation. You were watching uh, your African folklore being turned into fiction and uh, called in other exactly. other names. 
But that is your truth. Those are your stories being told by someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, rewritten into their own version to fit their culture, you know. <laughs> and in Ghana, right? In Ghana, in Ghana, that nobody will go the night. They go in this forest because this forest have evil fairies, and these fairies, their head is backwards, so their body is facing forward, their head is facing backwards. And if you mention to anybody in Ghana to go to this this forest, they will be like, "No, you crazy! I'm not going there. If you go there, you won't come out because the the evil fairies will will take you." They actually have uh, little sculptures you know, of, so. of, of those in, in in Ghana. I've I've got friends who are from Ghana. They they've shown me those uh, sculptures. Even even the the the, the shamans okay. from from exactly. Ghana, they they, okay. they encounter uh, those fairies when they go to the forest and there are certain rituals that they do there to communicate with those, those fairies. So those are real things that are existing there. I know I know about them. Okay. See, so we both both know about the same story, right? I'm in America, yeah. you're in South Africa, about the same story in Ghana. He's proof to that. True, different people true, told true. me and a different person told you. But we know the same story. True. So yeah, I think that's going to be a great conversation. I think it, it kind of gives one's imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely um, brings the mind out of you. you know? it, it, it's 4.30 now. I've, I've been up since yeah, 1 o'clock. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we went um, over. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll, yeah, we we'll have another session another time and then we'll continue where we left off and add other topics on top. I would like to thank uh, everyone who joined us. Uh, Mr. Muzi, you can now go to sleep. <laughs> I'll come to your house for that 5G. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yes, you definitely can stick around with him. Yeah, yeah, no. We definitely need happen. him when you live stream. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to his house when yes, I wake up. <laughs> I'm just gonna use that 5G. <laughs> especially, yeah, especially <laughs> Sophia. You definitely have to be at his house when we meet with Sophia tomorrow. So she said okay, two o'clock yeah. is fine. So you got my time, eight okay. o'clock your time. Eight it, p.m. Fine. tomorrow you, your, your time. You'll, you'll text me on, on WhatsApp uh, okay. prior to that, maybe 30 minutes before so that I, I can set up. Yes. And then we, we can meet each other. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that Sophie's mother was a shaman. A Native American shaman. Yes. The the, the, the Maya, the Mayan people. Is she from the Maya tribe? Or the No, she wasn't um, what's this other No, I think she's um not Mayan. I think she's a Cherokee. I think she was a Cherokee shaman. Oh. I will ask her again oh. tomorrow. Um, I think she said Cherokee. I believe it was Cherokee. No. If not, she'll let me know tomorrow when we talk to her about it. But yeah, I remember she she mentioned that her mom is a shaman. Her mom used to be a shaman, a seer, and she didn't really speak much English. She yeah. had her own native um, language. Thank you. Thank you very much for hosting me. And I see my number is down there. Anyone who wants to consult, they can use that number. You can call me or use WhatsApp text or email me or they will find me on Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Muti. Thank you, everyone who joined us tonight. 
Ashe. Yes, thank you for being Ashe. here. Yes, Ashe. Thank you for being here. Until next time, take care. Love and gratitude. Ashe.